Hey everybody and welcome back to another week of life books. We had one week off, uh, but we're back at it again with another book of the Bible. And if you haven't been a part of this series in the past, that's okay. Let me give you a quick recap. Basically, we've been talking about these books of the Bible that have deep, have had deep and meaningful impact on my life. And they've kind of created the person that I am today based on what I've learned from those passages and those verses within those books. Okay, so we've talked about the book of Amos in the Old Testament. Then we talked about the book of Hebrews in the New Testament, the book of Acts in the New Testament. And tonight we're going back to the New Testament for one one final book for this series uh, and I'm excited about it. Now I have to tell you that uh, it's interesting because we're going to the Gospels tonight. So the first four books of the Bible um, talk about the life of Jesus, right? That's really what we learn about in the Gospels. We see him interacting with his disciples constantly and so we get this idea of who we need to become to be more like Christ. But in the book we're talking about tonight, it's Matthew, the book of Matthew, uh, we're going to be talking about a, a few chapters specifically, chapters 5, 6, and 7 in the book of Matthew and how they really have formed me into the person I am and how they really are the three of the most pivotal chapters of the Bible because of what they represent in terms of what it means to be a Christian. The word Christian actually comes from the Greek word Christianos and all that really means is to be a follower of Christ. And so you can see why going to the Gospels and then specifically what we're going to see in Matthew 5, 6, and 7, why it's imperative that we learn more about Jesus in order to become better Christians. Now, we could talk about what it means to be a better Christian. I don't even know if that's a thing, but what I really want us to see is why it's important to follow follow the way of Jesus to becoming more like him. That's what we're trying to do. That's why we're followers of Christ. And so we're going to talk a little bit about that and what that means in Matthew 5, 6, and 7 specifically. To start, I guess, at the beginning of Matthew, we see uh, the ge genealogy of Jesus. And what that means is like a list of ancestors of Jesus. And, and I could honestly talk for hours about why that's actually really, really important that we understand the genealogy of Jesus, but we're not going to talk about that tonight. And then we're not going to talk about the birth of Jesus. Jesus. I know it's weird not to talk about Christmas when we're talking about the Gospels, but we're going to skip right past that. We're going to skip past uh, the kind of the adult life of Jesus when he was baptized by John the Baptist and then when he spent time in the wilderness. And we're going to get to the start of his ministry in Matthew chapter 5. Now, I know that I've kind of tried to emphasize why this is so important. Again, why we're looking at Matthew 5, 6, and 7 to understand what it means to be followers of Christ. But just to show you how imperative these passages of scripture are, I want to read a quote from a guy named John Bone, B-O-N-N-E. Okay, so there's this guy, he was in the, he was a, a theologian in the 1600s, and this quote is from 1629, and here's what it says. All of the articles of our religion, all of the canons of our church, all the injunctions of our princes, all the homilies of our fathers, all the body of divinity, divinity is in these three chapters, in this one Sermon on the Mount. Now, I know that's like got some big words and it's like this kind of big theological concept talking about canon, which be, means like the creation of the Bible and talking about like the homilies of our fathers, which basically means like all the sermons we've ever heard. But what he's trying to get at is that it all comes down to these three chapters. And that's kind of crazy because there are 1,189 chapters of scripture in the entirety of the Bible. And we're talking about how imperative three chapters are in that entire narrative. So in Matthew chapter five, it starts out right away with us learning that Jesus is sitting in front of this crowd and he's delivering this sermon. He's teaching them about what it means to be like him, be like Jesus. And right away in Matthew 5, right, we see the Beatitudes. And here's what it says. God blesses those who are poor and realizes their need for him. For the kingdom of heaven is theirs. God blesses those who mourn, for they will be comforted. God blesses those who are humble, for they will inherit the whole earth. God blesses those who hunger and thirst for justice, for they will be satisfied. God blesses those who are merciful, for they will be shown mercy. God blesses those whose hearts are pure, for they, will see, for they will see God. God blesses those who work for peace, for they will be called the children of God. God blesses those who are persecuted for doing right, for the kingdom of heaven is theirs. Now, here's the thing. The people who are reading this or hearing this sermon in Matthew chapter 5 right away are seeing just how backwards all of this is. People weren't about justice and, and putting others first. They were a very 
self-centered culture. And I would argue that we tend to live in a self-centered culture as well, where it's all about our own needs, where Jesus is saying, actually, it's about the needs of others. And that's what we're seeing all throughout the, the Sermon on the Mount is Jesus does things backwards. He shocks people with the way that he does things so counterculturally. It works against the selfish nature of humanity, but this is the way of Christ. This is what it means to be followers of Jesus. Throughout these three chapters of scripture, that's all we're seeing. Our backwards concepts going against the culture at the time and going against culture for today because the way of Jesus is just better. Jesus is pointing people towards holiness. And the word holy is from the Hebrew word kadash, which means to be set apart for a specific purpose. And what we learn is that Jesus' specific purpose is to be is to inherit the kingdom of God, to be like Christ, and to be a part of this, this kingdom created by the creator of the universe. So again, I know I'm trying to keep these devotionals short, but it means that we can't really get into the meat and potatoes of these passages of scripture. And so my hope again is that you explore this first. Further, that you read the entire book of Matthew, the entire Gospels really, but specifically read Matthew 5, 6, and 7 to learn more about the nature of Christ and to learn more about the person of Christ and who he intends for us to be. So here's what we're going to do in our small groups tonight. The first thing is I want you to open up Matthew chapter 5, 6, and 7 and kind of skim through it. If you want to read the whole thing, that's great, but if you don't have time for that, skim through it to kind of see the things that I'm talking about. See the things that go counter our culture today and counter the culture of people back in those days. The second thing I want you to do is talk about what it means to live differently in our culture today. And talk about what it means to live differently in terms of whether or not we're just doing it to be different or if there's real purpose behind why we're living differently. And the last thing I want you to do is, since you're in your small groups, talk a little bit about what it means to hold one another accountable, uh, accountable in terms of what it means to be set apart for God's purposes. What does that mean for your small group? I know accountability can be really hard, but it's so necessary and it can be done so well in our small groups. The book of Matthew has been so important in my life because it shows me the type of person that I want to be, the person that I'm becoming, and I want to be more like Christ. And I hope the same is true for you. So I hope that's something you can kind of dwell on and chew on over the next couple of weeks. Um, but that's it for me tonight. So I hope you have a great small group and I hope that you continue to find passion for scripture every single day.